Good afternoon. We welcome you to worship this afternoon at our Church of Our Lady of Lourdes, whether you worship with us regularly or whether you're just visiting with us today. Whatever brings you here, wherever you're at on your faith journey, we welcome you. We pray today as we always pray in the name of our God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And as always, as we come for worship, we pause briefly as we begin. Aware of our feelings and our sinfulness, we ask our God that in the Eucharist you and I share today, that we might know again God's presence, the forgiveness of our sins, and God's peace. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary, and so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father, and so we pray, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who leads us into everlasting life, and so we pray, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sinfulness, and bring us all to life everlasting. And on this beautiful day, let us give our God praise as we sing our God's hymn of glory. Glory to God. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it, or be preserved had it not been called forth by you. But you spare all things because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore you rebuke offenders little by little, warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, <clears throat> Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. <clears throat> so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. But the Son of Man has come to seek out and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. This past week, as I was reflecting on our gospel today, I was struck in particular by four things. First, notice in the opening sentence of this gospel, we are told that Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Oftentimes in the scriptures, we find Jesus passing by or passing through a place. And if he hasn't stopped, he just kept right on going. As today, in today's case, it was Zacchaeus climbing a tree that caught his attention and caused him to stop. Similarly, I believe that Jesus continually passes through our lives, not physically as in today's gospel, but in many different guises. Jesus comes into our lives every day in one form or another. The challenge for us is to recognize him as he comes into our lives so that he doesn't pass by. To do this, we need to be prepared to meet him in any person and in any experience. Second, we're told that Zacchaeus was short of stature, and because of the crowd surrounding Jesus, he could not see Jesus. So in spite of being a rich and important man, he didn't hesitate to climb a tree to get a good look at Jesus. However ill-gotten his wealth, Zacchaeus retained a searcher's ability to seek the truth. He really wanted to see Jesus, and fat cat that he was, he had the childlike capacity to take the necessary means to see Jesus. He climbed a tree. To me, this suggests that often we too are not able to see Jesus in our lives because we're crowded out by other people and the way they think. To see Jesus, sometimes we have to get away from the crowd, risk being different or doing something different, or approach people or things from a different perspective. Third, notice that while Jesus wanted to, well, Zacharias, Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, Jesus also saw him. We can only imagine Jesus' surprise, Zacchaeus' surprise, when Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down. I must stay at your house. Notice that Jesus didn't say, I'd like to stay at your house, or it would be nice if. Rather, he said, I must stay at your house. Jesus also wishes to enter into our lives. He wishes to stay with us. In the book of Revelation, we read, those we read those beautiful words, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will enter their house and dine with them and he with me. Jesus wants to stay with us. The question is whether our doors are open and whether we are ready to offer Jesus hospitality in our lives. Fourth and finally, notice Zacchaeus does not hesitate to respond to Jesus. He climbs down quickly, delighted to welcome Jesus to his home. The reaction of the crowd, however, is something else. They are deeply shocked and, and scandalized. He's gone to stay at the house of a sinner. 
The people didn't understand Jesus' point of view. <clears throat> in the Gospels, Jesus also often went out to those who are on the margins, to those who are far from God. That last idea ties in nicely with a, a document recently issued by the Vatican on October 27th. It distilled a number of major themes from listening sessions that were held around the world. The title of the document was, Enlarge the Space of Your Tent. While this document was careful to note that it was not magisterial teaching, it's rather a candid expression of our Catholic Church's relationship with the modern world. In one section, the document quoted from the report from our United States. It said, people ask that the church be a refuge for the wounded and broken, not an institution for the perfect. They want the church to meet people wherever they are, to walk with them rather than judge them, and to build real relationships through caring and authenticity. I think those words are very important. They remind us that we are to carry out the mission of Jesus Christ in our time and place by welcoming people and meeting them where they are at. Just as Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' house in our gospel today, so too he wants to come into our lives, perhaps most particularly into the lives of those who feel estranged, those who feel at a distance from God. Given this, let us pray today that you and I might recognize Jesus when he offers to come to our house, into our lives. But let us pray also that in imitation of him, we might welcome others, especially those who feel estranged or on the margins, to join us as we all seek to respond to Jesus' invitation. And together let us profess our common beliefs. I believe in one God, <clears throat> the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting and believing that God is present with us as we gather in our God's name, let us turn to our God with our prayers of intercession. For Pope Francis, as he preaches the gospel of conversion, May we all imitate Jesus who come to seek out and save those who are lost. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord awaken compassion in the hearts of the powerful, especially for the poor and the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we as Christians be worthy of our calling and work to glorify the name of the Lord in our actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those nearing the end of life, they receive care that respects their dignity and protects their lives as they place their hope in the promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers in our parish book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in mind or body, may our compassionate and loving God come to their aid. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they know the mercy of the God who created them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear the prayers you have spoken. Know well, though, the prayers of our hearts. Send forth your powerful love into our lives. May your love make us what you have called us to be. Grant this, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to our almighty God. May this spiritual offering, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole, whole world in all its wonder, that we might forever praise you in your mighty works through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of heaven, we praise you this day, Lord, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer to you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Bernard Hebda, our Archbishop, and Joseph Williams, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Oh, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and share with those near us some sign of that peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus Christ, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I think we have two announcements today. Just a reminder that Tuesday is the Solemnity of All Saints, a holy day of obligation. Masses here at Our Lady of Lourdes will be at 12.05 p.m. and at 5.30 p.m. 
Next weekend on November 5th and 6th, we'll have a presentation after all the masses on the many relics that, are, that we are fortunate to have here at Our Lady of Lourdes. The reliquaries are up there and up there, but we're gonna bring them down and you can see the different relics. So we invite you to stay after masses next weekend and to learn more about the saints and why the church keeps and honors relics. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended, let us go in peace.